In this video, we're going to focus on OSI soft writes, so being able to write Pi points and also asset framework elements uh, into the Pi system from uh, from Hibyte. So briefly, because some quick setup I did uh, prior to the finishing the read video is I created an input for OPC and brought in some tags, and then I created a data model. So right now, we don't have the ability to take a raw tag and write that out to Pi. Maybe we might enhance it to add that in the future, but Pi has a bunch of interface nodes to get really easily get data in, and it's probably better if you're just trying to get OPC data in to use their OPC interface. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to push a model because uh, that's supported in the beta. So for a model, I just have a chiller model with two attributes, temperature, humidity. That is a child model called fan with three attributes. And in my instances, I've got a chiller one that has a fan one attached to it and I've just kind of wired that up to some some tags and if I push that I, earlier I pushed that out to webhook so you can kind of see the structure of the data there so you want to get this into the Pi system so what I'm going to do first is create an output and the first one I'm going to do is just a point output so what this is going to do is create uh, points in Pi not the assets just the points right into the archive so it's got to turn the model, the hierarchy of the model, into a point name. And it's going to do that by just dot delineating the points. And as we enhance it, we'll probably add some more flexibility in how those point names are generated. But currently, it uses the dot separator. So you can add an optional path, which will just pre or append, or prepend you know, a name to the, the, um, the point name. And you can also override the point name. So by default, the point name will have the instance name, which if you remember, uh, is this chiller one in it when we set it up. So by default, that'll be in the point name, which you can do with that setting. Oops, I shouldn't have backed out of here. What you can do with this setting is override that to be something static, or you can uh, make it dynamic. So you can make it something from the payload or, or whatever. Timestamp is the same way. By default, we'll, the, the right will be the timestamp. Uh, the timestamp on the right will be the time at which we wrote. Right. If you want to override that because there's a timestamp in the payload, you can do something like this to reference the output timestamp uh, or, or whatever you're calling it in your payload. And that just needs to be an ISO 8601 format to apply that timestamp to the right to timestamp the data. But I'm just going to leave this all as default, and then I'm going to switch this flag on to say, hey, I want to create the pi point if it's not there. If you left this off, we would just fail the right if the point wasn't there already. So I've got that. So I'm just going to create a flow that says 2pi. And I'm going to pull in the chiller1 instance. And I'm going to point it at the point output. And we'll just send it up every second, turn it on. I'm going to jump over to logs quick to make sure there's not an error. Looks like we're good. Uh, so yeah, so let's jump over to the Pi system. So in this case, I have Pi system, the Pi out in the cloud. Uh, but I'm connected with my asset framework here. Uh, I'm just going to search. So one of the things we do is the point source we call Hibyte to make it unique or HB. So I'm just going to search for all those points. And you can see, if I select all those and bring them in, this is the chiller one dot fan attribute dot amps. And these are, you know, you can see how we broke that hierarchy into point names, right? And now the data is available in Pi. So pretty cool. And we, you know, like I said, we could use the path to put something at the front of this. We could use the point name to override what this chiller one comes in as, but you kind of get the, get the idea. So let's go back to the connections and now let's output the asset, right? So instead of a point output, we're going to call an asset output. We're going to select the asset. Here we have to spec out the database we want it to land in. We're going to call it high byte. Path is really similar. The only difference is there's hierarchy in asset framework. So if I pull up the Pi system explorer, you know, I can pick A1150 environmental as an example and get my element to appear under that. If I leave it blank, path blank, it'll just appear at the root. So I'm just going to do that. Leave that blank. Asset name is the same, same thing. The element, the root element that I'm writing is going to be called chiller1 in my current case. If I wanted to override this to be a static value or, you know, make it a dynamic value from something in the payload, I could do that. And timestamp is the same way. So the time of the write, I can control via the payload. All right, I'm going to turn that on to say create the asset. And I'm going to go, I could run both these at the same time, but I'm just going to bring in the asset one and keep it, keep it rolling. And what we'll see when we create an asset, we actually create the points first. 
and then we create the template, and then we create the asset. The points are named the same as the point output that I created before because I didn't mess with the path field or anything, so nothing's changed here. These are the same point names. But what will change is in here. And if I refresh this, you'll see chiller1 shows up at the root, and then it's got some data. Data's flowing in, and then the fan comes in as well. And then if I jump over to library, uh, you can see I have a chiller model that has the attributes of the high byte model now pushed into the Pi asset framework. So I've taken that entire high byte model and pushed it into asset framework. Uh, in the beta, it's not additive. So if I went in to add additional attributes to my model, it wouldn't show up. I'd have to delete the model and reproduce it. In the release version, it will be additive. So as I add attributes uh, to my model or my instances or elements, they'll, they'll automatically be propagated out to the Pi system. So that's that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, and that's it. So you can you can do a lot with that, right? But you can push, take high byte data, turn it into raw Pi points by breaking it down, the hierarchy, or you can push it directly in via um, assets. And currently all the you know all the model parameters become Pi points and attributes in the element model. So uh, pretty cool feature. You know you can take data from anywhere. I just showed OPC, but you could push data from Pi from SQL from other systems. Uh, in a model fashion right into asset framework. So give that a try and uh, send us your feedback.